Hello everyone, welcome back to Truth and Fantasy. This is episode number two. I hope you all enjoyed the first episode. I got some really nice feedback from some of you guys, so thank you for that. On today's episode, we are going to be exploring the concept of um, craving validation through emotional chaos, or just craving emotional chaos, just kind of feeling some sort of hole within the self with really big, dramatic, sometimes tumultuous emotions. Um, And then in turn, how that kind of plays out within relationships, particularly romantic relationships. And um, yeah, we'll just be kind of looking into where all that comes from. Of course, talking a lot about childhood today. I think to an extent, this is something most people deal with unconsciously. And I just want to say if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're in like your early 20s, because that's <laughs> um, most of my listeners and audience on my social media platforms, um, this is huge. Like, this is really important to be looking at at this time in your life because most people go their entire lifetime without realizing. Um, the ways they're kind of seeking out chaos externally and how that affects their life Um, and they never fully feel settled or they fully feel resolved, whatever it is. Um, A lot of people don't become aware of this pattern, so this is a big one to be looking at today and uh, yeah, just give yourself a pat on the back if you're actually looking at this within yourself because this is really challenging. Um, And I would say specifically if you had a rough childhood or any type of extreme emotional back and forth or pain um, growing up, you probably play out that pattern now. Um, Again, I'm not trying to like put words into your mouth if that doesn't resonate and you don't think that you do, Um, you know, then you don't. (laughs) But I think to an extent, um, we tend to play out patterns Uh, that existed within our childhood completely unconsciously and um, it takes a lot of courage to actually look back um, and reintegrate the hurt inner child um, and really get to the root of where this need for emotional chaos comes from. Before I get into the interview, I want to kind of talk about what I mean by emotional chaos and drama because I think this can look very very different and specific Um, and like I said there's kind of a spectrum with this I think to an extent we all kind of do this and crave big intense emotions I think it typically shows up within our romantic relationships just because that's where we associate the biggest emotions to take place um, and the most validating emotions to take place so I think typically it plays out in that realm I also think it can play out um, in the world of job and career, maybe someone who is always changing jobs and never feels satisfied staying in one place. Um, The shift and back and forth of maybe moving around a lot or going from one career to another, that creates big emotions. Um, So kind of underlying that external behavior is this need for like new emotions to arise, like a new wave I'm almost visualizing of emotions to kind of come crashing within the self um, because maybe that feels validating or that feels safe or that is their only way to make up a sense of self. So those are just some examples. um, But like I said, this can look really differently for anyone. So just kind of take this in and um, apply it to your own life as it resonates. Um, so the person I interviewed for this episode, her name is Jaden, and she was really nice to talk to. I really appreciate her, um, responses to these questions. Like, you can just really tell that she's done the work of looking at this, and, um, she talks about how her mom had borderline personality disorder growing up and how that has affected her, um... And I just think to be able to be so aware of that, once again, at this age, is huge. I was really excited to talk to her. 
I do want to warn you, the audio for this is a little bit weird. Um, it's kind of echoey, so just prepare yourself. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm working with this Skype recorder program. Hopefully, by the next episode, it will be better. Um, but yeah, you can still understand everything, so just <laughs> warning about that. But here we go. Here's the interview with Jay. Okay. So this is Jaden, everybody. Hello. Hello. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. Um, do you want to just restate like what you submitted? Okay. Um, I don't remember it word for word, but I basically said that um, I have become almost like addicted to being in the abuse that I faced when I was a child. Um, and when I'm in situations where that's not present, I find myself searching for that. Um, I think that was the nature of what I said. Yeah, um, I'm really excited to talk about this one today because I think it's something that we all subconsciously face. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's different levels of abuse in everyone's experience and what that looks like, but yeah, and I think it's important to um, look at this, especially like as a young adult when you're kind of transitioning out of childhood. So yeah, I think there's a lot within this, but what are kind of like the thoughts and feelings that come along with this situation? Yeah, so I find myself like when I'm, I'm in a healthy relationship now and it's the first healthy relationship that I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Um, and I find myself when I'm not in the midst of any chaos or like instability, it's almost like I feel like I'm unwanted, mm. like those kinds of things. Um, oh, that's so interesting. It's really like contradicting, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I just find almost like I found my worth in the actual like inconsistency of the love that I was given as a child so as I've gotten older I feel important when I'm in situations where people are treating me inconsistently or seeking like a reaction out of me through like manipulation like it's really really strange but <laughs> yeah um, what was like was there anything specific that you did to identify this or to kind of like be able well, to exist in a more healthy relationship my mom actually has borderline personality disorder so I found myself um I had a lot of learned behavior from her like I wasn't diagnosed with it I don't think I have it but there was just a lot of coping mechanisms and things that I adapted from seeing how she was and actually I got out of a very toxic and unhealthy and abusive relationship and I went into a healthy one eventually and when I got into the healthy relationship that I'm in now I found myself um because it was so stable I would find myself creating issues that weren't there or doing the whole well do you really love me thing as in like I don't know seeking a reaction somehow in order to actually feel wanted and I kind of questioned like why am I bringing all of this with me into something that's healthy and why do I feel like I need it there? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful you were able yeah. to that. <laughs> Thank you. That's really cool. Um, so I guess the last question I'll ask you, is this something you feel alone in and like kind of isolated within? Yeah, it's definitely something that, I mean, I wouldn't really feel comfortable going to anyone saying this I I've always felt like it makes me sound crazy and then like I watch the things you post and the things people share and I'm like okay maybe it's more of a universal experience than I think but yeah yeah I'm glad that um <laughs> the things I'm posting make you feel yeah like here, but yeah yeah I think you. this is something like I said on various levels we can all kind of relate to to an extent so mm -hmm. yeah all right, thank well, you thank you um for talking with me. No problem. Thanks, Thanks for having me on here. <laughs> so again, like I said, I know Jaden mentioned abuse. I don't think that you need to necessarily experience um, 
like real tangible emotional abuse in order to have this pattern carry out um, into your adult life. And I think that's what makes it really tricky is um, when we start to look back to our childhoods to kind of question where these patterns are coming from, a lot of the times um, it's from more like covert, invisible messages or invisible patterns that existed within the family dynamic. So that's what makes it really challenging to pick up on these little uh, messages that were sent to you and um, just ways of interacting within an intimate situation. Um, and by intimate, I don't mean sexual. I just want to clarify that because I'll probably be using the word intimate a lot in this specific podcast. I just mean your closest relationships, the ones where you can be emotionally expressive and vulnerable and you feel safe within. Um, that's what an intimate relationship is to me. Um But yeah, back to what I was saying about these more like transient, invisible messages. I think that's why we then carry, unconsciously carry these patterns into our our adulthood is because these messages or patterns or whatever it is that's ingrained within us are so closely held to the self that they are invisible. They just are the truth. Um, They kind of make up the container that we show up to life in. Um, They create our schemas and just like these boxes of how we fit certain experiences and um, expectations for what life will look like uh, into. So yeah, that's why I say I think we all kind of deal with this to an extent. Um, But let's start with childhood. Let's just go into it here. So I believe that what we experience within our family dynamics sets us up for how we are going to participate in romantic relationships. Um, Because that's where we learn what an intimate connection looks and feels like in a few different ways. First of all, by observing our parents' relationship. Um, that sets up a whole schema for what love is going to look like in the future for us because that's the first kind of romantic relationship that we get to see intimately that affects our sense of self as well. Um, But we also just learn about what love is and how we receive love by the way that our parents interacted with us. So... If you experience a lot of emotional drama and pain within your family system, um, but at the same time, you know, there's so much love and care and warmth and intimacy there, you're going to begin to associate warmth and love and intimacy with pain and big emotions and drama. So those two start to kind of become hand in hand. And then when you grow up, you unconsciously um, begin seeking those same two things together from your most intimate relationships, specifically love and romantic relationships. And going back to what Jaden said uh, when I was talking to her, I thought this was really beautiful. She said, when I'm in a healthy relationship, I feel unwanted. And when there's no chaos or instability like I feel like the person doesn't want me and I have to kind of create some sort of chaos in order to feel wanted and desired in that moment um and that's such a conscious thing to be able to um identify within yourself like that's crazy but that goes back to what I was just speaking on of that's because when she was growing up the love she received it sounds like from her mother Um, was probably a little bit chaotic just because of her mother's own mental and emotional state, which doesn't mean that her mom was a bad person. It means that her mom was human and (laughs) struggled with raising a child, which a lot of our parents do. It's just the reality of this human existence. It doesn't mean you're pointing your finger at your parent and saying, you were bad, you messed me up. Um... No, it's about forgiving them at the end of the day. But being aware of, oh, 
that pattern that I'm carrying out right now comes from my parents' own stuff, not my own stuff. And I do have the power and potential to undo that. Jaden also mentions learned behavior, which again, I think is a really great point that she made. Um, as kids, that's kind of how we begin to make sense of the world, um, by observing and repeating the behavior we see in others, especially our parents, because that's kind of the closest relationship we have. Um, and of course, we really look up to our parents as well and feel really close and like we kind of want to be like them when we're adults. So I think it's really interesting to think about what we learned about both relationships and emotions within the family system, because I think as a kid, that's where you kind of experience those things um, the most. Of course, you experience the most intimate and close relationships within the family system, usually, obviously not speaking for everyone. Um, but it's also the place where it's more safe to express yourself emotionally. Um, or at least as a ch like young child, you're probably more likely to like go home and cry to your mom than cry in school about something or you're probably going to seek out some sort of emotional close I mean you are children are literally programmed to seek out some sort of emotional closeness from their mothers so both of these things relationships and emotions are really um, explored for the first time in the most real and raw way um, within that family system so again, going back to whatever covert, invisible messaging you received about relationships and emotions within that family system, um, and also observing how your parents deal with emotions and relationships, that's going to become very deeply ingrained within you, and then you're going to kind of combine those two things um, to give you a sense of what intimate romantic relationships are going to look like and then play out those patterns from there so i'm gonna give you an example of what i mean from my own life um, as a child i felt very emotionally abandoned and there was a lot of emotional chaos within my family system um, and a lot of my pain was kind of brushed under the rug, um, <laughs> to keep things short. And although I felt really close and supported by my family, and I would say overall I had a really good childhood, there was so much pain and chaos inside of me that was not being held or met. So um, that's what I mean by emotionally abandoned. And um, I received a lot of again, invisible messaging that my emotions were just too much to handle. Um, and so now within my romantic relationships, I have fully noticed myself repeating those same patterns of seeking out partners who cannot give me what I want emotionally. Um, and it feels like those same exact chaotic feelings from my childhood of there is this sense of stability to it and there is this sense of closeness but then when I try to you know move forward emotionally it's like something erupts and it's this big kind of like explosion type of a thing um, but in a secret no one wants to talk about it kind of way it's just the same pattern um, and it's really interesting to notice like I think if you start um, kind of having a more discerning eye to your own relationship patterns um, and really get down and like wiggle your way down to the core of what it feels like, you'll be like, oh, that's exactly how I've been feeling throughout my whole life, kind of starting from what existed within my family dynamic. It's kind of crazy. And when I say crazy, I don't mean that you are crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's just really interesting that we do this um, and carry out this invisible process. But yeah, I want to reiterate the fact 
none of this makes you crazy. And I think a lot of us, especially women, feel crazy for having this need and um, longing for emotional chaos and drama. Um, But it makes sense. If you were, you know, put in these situations as a child, like, you are going to continue to carry out the patterns. It's not your fault. But you have the responsibility and you have the power to undo this for yourself, which is really hard because it's addicting. (laughs) Um, But really what it means is that your inner child is in need. Your inner child is screaming out and it's trying to receive something. It's trying to receive some sort of comfort, some sort of nourishment in the only way that it knows how. Because this is how it received validation and comfort and nourishment you know in your childhood so it's going to continue when it's hurting when it's screaming out in pain it's going to continue to act in the same way unless you start to talk to it um and by talking to it i think that's something a lot of us struggle with especially if you're more of like a left-brained logical person um there's no rule book for how to reintegrate the hurt inner child um and it's not this like strategical uh step-by-step process it's just communicating with a part of you that is scared and letting it know that it's safe and um that's kind of what reparenting yourself is So once you notice, um, if you're looking back at these patterns and you start to notice, oh, I am kind of playing out this emotional chaotic thing, um, and you maybe notice yourself doing it in the moment, um, sit back for a second and say, okay, I know that this is my inner child hurting right now. Um, So I'm going to ask my inner child what it needs. And that doesn't mean that you have to, like, analyze the inner child and then come up with an answer. Um, Do this in a really soft and gentle and light and playful way. Like, do it in a way that you would talk to an actual five-year-old sitting in front of you. Oftentimes, these needs that, like, aren't being met, it's kind of like illusions. Um, Like, your inner child is projecting whatever pain they experienced in child childhood onto this current situation if that makes sense so going back to emotional abandonment like I was speaking on um say someone doesn't text me back for a few days if I'm seeing that through the lens of the hurt inner child I'm gonna I'm going to see that as that person abandoning me um And then from there, maybe I want to stir up some emotional chaos or whatever the case is. But if I'm seeing that from like the adult lens, I can just say to myself, maybe they're busy or they're doing their own emotional processing and it has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with them abandoning me. Um, So I think that's something important to remember too, is a lot of the times we see um, these situations through a disillusioned lens like a lens that isn't the truth so once you're able to see to the core of what need isn't being met or whatever it is that's coming up um you can start to communicate with your inner child and say okay i know that this is how we used to deal with this situation because that's all we knew that's what we were taught that's what we observed um but now we're going to try it this way and we're going to try to communicate this need or figure this out in a healthy way and you're probably going to feel a lot of resistance towards that um so expect that like this is not an easy thing by any means um and it takes so so much awareness also um but maybe start to like write down some ways that you feel like would fulfill um, whatever this need is in a more healthy, productive, um, long-term oriented way, if that makes sense. And that's what reparenting yourself is. And um, it's a lifelong process. Like I said, it's not easy and you're not gonna 
it's not like you're gonna do this once and then you're set um, because there's a lot to kind of uncover within the inner child that exists within each of us and as time goes on as we're doing this work we're in therapy or whatever it is um, more of the inner child will come back to us because they start to feel safer um, and we'll be we'll be able to reintegrate that hurt, afraid part of us um, and do less of this creation of emotional drama and chaos. So getting back to the whole emotional chaos topic, I think a lot of this also comes from like a hole inside of us. At least for me, when I sense myself feeling a little bit drama (laughs) or just I feel like I need to kind of stir something up, Uh, specifically within my love life, it's because there's like this dark hole within me, kind of. Like something, it feels like something's missing. So, along with the inner child, I think you should also get to know that hole. (laughs) Which sounds bad. Um, But seriously, get to know what this part of you is yearning for. Like, what is it that you're craving for so deeply in this moment that you have to do something that you know is gonna like cause you pain or cause chaos or not be the healthiest thing, which there's nothing wrong with um, doing something that's a little unhealthy every now and then. Don't get me wrong. I'm kind of a big believer in learning from being stupid from time to time, which isn't the best advice. But sometimes I think we have to let ourselves create some emotional drama and then go back and be like, oh, why did I do that? And question ourselves from there. Um, You know, it's human to make mistakes and do stupid things sometimes, as long as you're being conscious and doing the work and not hurting anyone. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent. Um, Yeah, it feels like this emptiness and um, what's important is to get to know this hole and how we can begin to fill it in a sustainable way because this emotional drama and chaos is a quick fix and my theory is this hole exists within a lot of us um, because we're yearning for true intimacy most of us humans are going around this planet terrified of true intimacy which could be a whole nother episode, and that also goes back to our childhood experiences. When I visualize emotional chaos, um, I see like these two people kind of running around this core center of what an intimate connection looks like. And maybe you get some sort of visual in your mind from that, but it just feels like, um, like running around the heart expression, um, if that makes sense. I almost wish I could like draw this out for you right now, but it's a podcast. Um, and I think that it's an attempt for intimacy. It's hard to get truly close to someone when you're in a chaotic place. Um, I think real connection comes from a very soft and gentle and heart-based space Um, and chaotic emotional drama feels like a buzzing kind of it's just two different energetic states and um, I think it's important to be aware of this as well um, because a lot of the times when someone kind of gets close or like takes a step in um, that can turn into drama and just questioning yourself of, is this a wall that I'm putting up in a sense? Is this chaotic energy um, present so I don't have to be in that really vulnerable soft spot? Um, Because that vulnerable soft spot often feels bruised within a lot of us. Um, And being chaotic and... um, that back and forth that kind of feels like a battle um, kind of allows you to have like a weapon up within this like intimate battle. You know what I mean? I'm just getting these visuals and I'm struggling to convey them through words. So hopefully you're, I don't know, making sense of that within your own mind and experience. But that's something I've been thinking about is how 
emotional chaos is this like stab at intimacy and closeness and um it's this like offer of like I want to be close with you but I don't necessarily know how um and it just leaves us yearning for intimacy still at the end of it because it's not intimacy it's not this true heart-based vulnerable really soft spot um it doesn't leave us feeling connected necessarily um sometimes it can if there's like a conversation after that's like really soft and I don't know goes deep into it but at the end of the day I think that um that's why this pattern plays out is it's like this whole of yearning for intimacy trying to receive that through the only way we know how a lot of the times which is like big volatile emotions um, and then still feeling empty after that because it wasn't true connection, if that makes sense, <laughs> just to summarize that point. Um, and I think that's why a lot of us think healthy relationships are boring also. And this is something I'm questioning with, questioning within myself a lot right now because I'm only 22. Like, I am here going through this stuff with you. I never want you guys to think I'm like, I don't know, like... A step above you in any sort of way like no like I'm here with you I too create emotional chaos um and I too have this belief that a healthy relationship is kind of boring and I don't necessarily want that for myself which kind of terrifies me but and I was actually talking to that talking about that with my therapist about how that terrifies me um and how I still associate love and pain and she said to me well you're doing this work you're conscious of it and that's kind of, you know, the best place to be in. And now from here, you get to learn and continue to grow just as long as you're conscious of it and doing the work. Yes, you might get hurt in the future and like, who knows what will carry out. But um, that's, you know, the most powerful place you can be, especially coming right out of your childhood. It's like there's no earlier time we could be doing this work because it's still not something we can touch and like play around with at that point so I don't want you to like feel like you need to figure this out or have this figured out after listening to this podcast it's just kind of something hopefully to spark a sense of reflection within you um but yeah that's something I've been questioning a lot and if you have any feedback on that um you can share that with me over on instagram sammy.quinn and I'll post any feedback I get like just your own experiences do you have you ever been in a healthy relationship and you're like bored within it and then you store stir up some sort of chaos and that sort of pattern playing out um and i also think a lot of us mistake emotional instability for passion and that's the same sort of thing i was talking about um with the filling of the hole (laughs) i need a better word for that uh the filling of the hole so same sort of thing it's like this chaos and um passion and we're like oh this is it this is closeness this is intimacy this is raw they're seeing me in this chaotic state um but that's not true intimacy that's not true passion um it's kind of moving around that so just some thoughts to leave you with and those are things i'm still kind of struggling with and working with um in my own life experience right now but I think that's all I want to say today. I really enjoyed exploring this. Um, Please leave me any feedback over on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, I'm always taking new submissions for the podcast. So if you have any sort of reflections or any experiences that you want to share with me that you have felt alone in that you would like to bring to the podcast, um, please DM me on Instagram, sammy.quinn. I would love to hear from you. And I think that's it. Thank you guys for listening, Uh, and I'll talk to you in the next one. (laughs) Bye.